So gentlemen, today we're talking about so rare conspiracies and the biggest one right now, where the hell is Simon? Hello and welcome in to another So Rare Andrews, So Rare Down Under crossover event here on the Sora Data Show. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on Sora, joined by Andy Black as always. And we've got the two, half, half of Sora done. Uh, is, where the fuck is Simon? <laughs> hey, no Alistair. one knows. No one knows. I haven't heard from him. He's He's gone dark. He's gone dark. <laughs> Thank God he's not under your desk. That you would look- be great. <laughs> Yeah. So there, there was like a small <laughs> part of me that thought he was just going to pop up, to be honest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> in hey. a pink suit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody, for coming in. Um, let's see. Jeremy was first. Jeremy is in Australia. I don't know where everyone else is, but these, I will say that the random times that we change the time for this show, all of Australia comes out. So thanks for coming out. Um, <laughs> All seven of us. Oh, <laughs> ECS and Hatligen on the podium. Thank you to everybody. Um, I think this was a Man United thing, which uh, we'll talk about Man United Chelsea because Alistair got me to play Rivals today. And mm. I've done the impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Saraya. Gator guy, I think it's a conspiracy that any team without five homies is one a thing. Um, Andy came up with this. Did you come up with the homies thing? I mean, I guess, you know. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bashful over there. For real, yeah. Keith is like legitimately angry he didn't come up with it. So um, yeah, he should be. He should be. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody, coming in. Uh, I'll just click a bunch of buttons here. Oh, wait. <laughs> Rizal said, if you don't all come in wearing your foil hats, it's not a real conspiracy discussion. Ooh. No. Oh! God. Here <laughs> we go. Damn it. <laughs> I'm so Alex, mad I didn't think to do that. <laughs> wow. We were going to wait for Simon, um, but, you know, that comment just, it, it it set me up there. I had to had to get it out. You know, I spent, like, way longer than I thought I would thinking about how you actually make a foil hat, and I had a little panic attack at, like, 11 p.m. last night being like, fuck, what if I can't make one? <laughs> so... How did, did you did you like wrap it around your head and build it from your head? Yeah, it's pretty easy, really. Um, <laughs> <turns out. laughs> you, you just wrap around your head and scrunch at the top. It's uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Although, I hope Simon brings his first attempt because he's got like this foil beret kind of thing going on. I really hope that that's the one that he turns up in. Would you guys be against me going and getting a roll of foil and building my own? What kind of question Not is at that? all. I'm gonna step away for a moment. <laughs> Please. I'm almost. Oh, wow, he even turned up. I'm almost offended. He had to ask that. Um, yeah, of course. Did you did you watch like a video about how to do it, or you just went for it? <laughs> I did Google it, yes, and then I saw that it was just a woman going, "Yep," yeah, and then just wrap it around your head. And I went, "Oh yeah, of course." <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I really, yeah. D- deleting yeah, the, the history. I that one out myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a few new people in the chat here, including this caramel garlic, which um, I would certainly remember, but hello to the down. Well, we only have one of them. Um, Just one. We don't know where the other one is. Something horrible yeah. could have happened. In fairness, I think we, ha- oh, well, not I think, we have the one that has always been true to so rare. None of yes, there's never true. like yeah. a. Never quit, Um, never, never sell up, never withdraw. Yes. Oh, here he is. Here we go. Got the uh, (laughs) off-brand Walmart. Oh, yeah. I thought you were about about to come in and say your wife wouldn't let you take the foil. (laughs) (laughs) So do I start here like this? Perfect. Yep. That's it. Okay. Let's just roll it around. You want to get the measurement first and then, and then, you know, give it a nice tear. Makes sense. This probably sounds awful on camera. No, right? it's, no it's not it's too bad. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I probably want to go like an extra time around 
Yeah. Right? Oh shit, yeah. it's ripping. Yeah. Yeah. You can't That's let any good, uh, right? microwave beams in. All right. I would I would so, give yourself a little measurement, more right? That's a good measurement, yep. Okay. He's a pro. He's a pro this guy. I might have I might have practiced a few times. Maybe. <laughs> like on the way to, back here or <laughs> All right. There you go. Yep. Now you just need to scrunch. Sweet. The shape of your head. Yeah, it should just like, yeah. Yeah, but on the back, how do I get kind of, the, how do I get the the size to stay? It kind of stays there on its yeah, own. Yeah. It's aluminum. At form. the moment, you look like some kind of conspiracy chef. I love it. Oh, shit. Scotch tape. Now you got to you got to scrunch the top. The top is oh, what of holds course, it all of together. course, of course. Yeah. If you'd googled like, this beforehand, you would know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Squeeze the head nice and tight. I was gonna say that is, yeah, looks like something else. Good. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I like this. Why are we pretending we've never done this before? <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> good start. Good start. This might be feels just good. like peak Sora Andrews right now. Yeah. Yep. How, how, it does feel really nice come. on my head. Like I would wear mm. this. I would wear this out to like a nice dinner. Sure. Yeah. All um, right. So now that I feel very out of place and like below both of you, uh, mm -hmm. in fact. There oh, there you go. Literally. Uh, who wants to I, kick us? I thought off you were going to go make one. I thought that's what you were going to go do. Me? No. No. Too cool. Yeah. Too he cool might get fired. He's not allowed to, he's not allowed say, to do yeah. that sort of nonsense. One of us, one I mean, of us is at work right now, all right? <laughs> after some of the conspiracies we unearthed today, you know, when, when we've still got our accounts at the end of the day and Laird's is mysteriously gone from Sarah, we'll know what, what's going on. Yeah. It wasn't protected. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Who wants right. to start? What do you got? Okay. Alistair, okay. you're the guest here. Why don't you start I mean, there's, with, there's with some, some there's some There's some real big ones. Um, okay. So, I mean, if this one's kind of, I guess, a pretty obvious one. Wait. wait. Oh. Hey. <laughs> yes. Look, I, I can't talk about where I've been. I can't talk about what I've been doing. Um, I think we just continue on business as normal. Um, I think it's best if you just don't ask questions and we move forward from this. Yeah, you've had a shower. You're ready to go. <laughs> you're cleansed. <laughs> I like that you've got a bit more of a peak to your hat now, Simon. Uh, I was just telling these guys about how when you first showed up, you had like just a flat beret of foil. <laughs> well, I was trying to go for like a fedora, like cap, sort of vibe um didn't quite work out as well as i'd hoped the in fairness fedora. in fairness a, a tinfoil beret for this mm. conspiracy about a french conglomerate heels seems to make sense mm. i mean that mustache is making you look pretty french <laughs> either french or a pedophile i can't tell Ooh. a little from column <laughs> a little from anyway um <laughs> ali what were you about to uh Okay, well, what, I didn't want to get too deep you too to early. This, I think this one's a pretty... I think everyone can kind of relate to this one. Um, so the people working at Opta obviously all play Sorare, and they own Sorare cards because there's <clears throat> there's players that are obviously given preferential treatment, and we've all had a player where they'll go on a run of like seven or eight games where they just score ridiculously. You're watching the game. It's not matching up. Something's not right. Um and then all of a sudden, the Opta guy sells his player, and then all of a sudden, those scores just go to shit. I'm thinking, who was that guy from Cruzeiro last year? Marlon. Marlon. The guy who was doing the Brazil games owned a Marlon, sold at the peak, insider trading, 100%. He hasn't scored a, over 60 cents. Yeah, and, and I think that he was just thinking, nobody's watching this shit, you know? Nobody's watching this. Nobody's going to yeah. – nobody will even know. 
Just buy a yep. couple margins. Yeah. I'm on to you. I'm on to you, Marlon guy. It, but 100. percent Let's see here. I think I have. Now, is that so rare, Brazil, or is that so rare, Brazil? <laughs> Ooh, good question. Good question. <laughs> here we go. This is Marlon. I'm guessing it was right in this area here. Yeah, you can tell where he sold him. <laughs> I mean, there's okay, definitely there's players a... where their score just seems to go up despite them doing nothing, and there's plenty of players where their score goes nowhere despite them doing everything. So do you think this applies to all leagues? Sorry, I'm going to I'm going to change one here. Do you think that the so rare card owning Opta intern in the Korea mm. got caught. And that's why all of the Korea K league stuff went down. Mm. Well, yeah, he just left. He just left midway through the year. <laughs> they just said, Nobody he just, he just walked out and then there was all of a sudden no Opta scores and they just, it's taken them six months to find a replacement. He sold his gallery. Had to get married. Did you say had to get married? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you sell your gallery? It's the only reason, surely. I think it was to buy an apartment. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's mole. We don't know where the moles are in Opta, but they're everywhere, you know. And you've pretty much, yeah. If 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 you've got a contact inside Opta, that's the only way to win. That's what pranksy has been doing. You know, if they, if they were smart, they they wouldn't they wouldn't rig it for one player. They would just rig it for their lineups on a given week, you know, and and just like make the little tweaks that you need every game week. Um, you know, oh, a last man tackle. Like, what is a last man tackle, anyways? Nobody knows. It doesn't mean anything. Ooh, I've got a good example. Can you bring up um, uh, what's his name? He plays for Warwick. I think it's like Vanden Boyce. B U I J S, and he's got like a, an absurd amount of last man tackles, clearances off the line. Like every week, he seems to get one. So there, you know, there's your Woolwick mole. There he is. Look at that! <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's like nine. Is that a clearance or a last man Two, tackle? Three, four, five, six. I think we use the same thing. Six. He's actually just playing goalie and. <laughs> Everything he does is a clearance off the line. Jeez. See, conspiracy sol solved. Had it what you, proven? <laughs> exposed. What's the exposed. There we go. That's one. One down. Okay, that's one. Ooh, Br Bruno just scored. That's great to hear. Uh, uh, if it if you had a card that was a center back and they played goalkeeper. Those aren't no, you wouldn't get clearance off the lines. Sorry, they're saves. Yeah, yeah. Whole lot of handballs, negative decisive <laughs> constantly. <laughs> right, right. I mean, Andy, the the best one, and I'm glad Keith is here. That Franco Armani penalty save from years ago, where mm -hmm. the still shot of him diving this way, and the ball is in the net, and the score changes, and they're like, "Yep, penalty save." Yep. I'm not sure Guys, I'm gonna bring. This I'm gonna I'm gonna change topics. I'm gonna bring up a pretty obvious one regarding uh, Pal Trader. Ooh, his identity. Who is he? Oh, uh, is that Nicholas? No, nah, it's Dan. No is it Dan so rare? <laughs> Ooh, who could it be? I had I had a similar conspiracy about, but Gokka. I think Gokka might be Nicholas. Um, mm. I think Nicholas secretly trying to get the word out. He's trying to warn us that Soraya's going to nothing, but he's got <laughs> investors, you know. He can't be coming out on the board and saying, hey, look, it's all going to zero, guys. So Gokker is his alter ego, his way of getting his conscience clean before everything just, you know, before everyone gets sent to jail. See, I was getting more like Jeffrey Epstein vibes from Gaka, like that, or uh, yeah. maybe like 12, like he's a 12-year-old girl or something like that. That's kind I'm of... getting some Jeffrey Epstein vibes from Simon right now. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Simon <laughs> from my own brother. Uh, oh, that's a conspiracy. I was going to say, hold on, hold on. That was a conspiracy in the chat here earlier. Oh, where did it go? 
There's a conspiracy that you guys are not brothers. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> so views. who do we think? Who do you think Pavel is, Black? Oh, it's it's definitely Nicholas. Yeah. Okay. And just and he's to... just he's it's his little side hustle. He's making all this money mm. on the side. He's just cleaning up. It yeah. started small too. You know, it started off with just a few cards, and uh, I'll just wheel and deal a few cards on the side. It's like mm. you know one of those little white lies that spun out of control, and now he's got this gallery with two million cards in it, and he's like, "What the fuck do I do? I just got to keep going. I got to keep going. You got addicted to the rush." Yeah, the rush of taking in 740 limited cards and giving someone else eight bucks for them. He kept putting the percentage up, and he was like, "This will, this will put him off. It, this will, this will put an end to it." And everyone's just like, "140 percent? No worries. Here you go." Yeah, <laughs> you sure you don't want more? <laughs> I did oh, see somebody had contacted him like fairly recently. He said he's now giving 50 percent on gallery buys, on rare and limited galleries. Wow, 50 percent. 50% That's of rough. what? So rare data value? Yeah. <clears throat> mm. hmm. Yep. I Might didn't read the... sell my gallery. 50% yeah. is not bad. It's not bad, yeah. I didn't read the, the end of this comment from before that, that <laughs> Alistair and Simon aren't brothers, that they're so rare referral and referees who met each other on YouTube comments <laughs> section. <laughs> Just send in, send in Haber rare cards back and forth, breaking the system. Oh, you're um, from Australia too? <laughs> <laughs> just a couple of keys. That's how it all started. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Someone, they, Daniel um, Cooper brought up the uh, the so rare that they don't actually do their giveaways. Um, now I've got a similar one to that, and I mean, again, this is pretty tame. But uh, Laird, you were talking earlier about how you're planning to hopefully get a Midgetland uh, jersey framed and, and put up on your wall. Um, now. I don't know about you. I also have a, a Spurs signed jersey, and I don't believe for a second that any of those signatures are from Spurs players whatsoever. <laughs> who do you think? Who do you think signed them? Uh, just some interns. Cafeteria you know, the lady. Yeah, cafeteria yeah. lady. Somebody bigger, I think. <laughs> Someone bigger than the cafeteria Nico lady. Signed? Yeah, yeah. You know, like like Momo or something. Like Momo seems like a guy that's. Signing autographs. We got to name names. This is a conspiracy show, guys. We can't just say, oh, some cafeteria lady. Name names. Call someone out. Sandra. <laughs> Sandra. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sandra. <laughs> yeah. Sandra. Up this spot. Yeah. Um, she's sitting at home watching right now at midnight, just like, damn it, guys. Come on. They got me. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that my Midland jersey, that they don't. Like so rare didn't know it was signed because when I got it, it was like it was like wrapped up in a in a roll, and it Ooh, had like a piece cafeteria of cafeteria lady wrapped up in a roll, huh? Yeah. Was, are is are the autographs uh, mayo? Is that like mayo that they used to? Once they got the breadcrumbs out of the way, I could finally see them. <laughs> breadcrumbs. No, but yeah. like I feel like everyone who posts like shares pictures of their jerseys there, there's always a certificate of authenticity from the club like i saw Maybe someone had had framed one and like the certificate was in the frame and i'm like i get it but also like do you think people like the they were so nervous that somebody was going to come over to their house and see their and they're like that's not real and they're like no 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 coa's right there guys uh but anyway yeah, um, signed also by sandra right. <laughs> the simo that evening calligraphy course finally paying off for sandra. <laughs> um but anyway so it was just like rolled up so like i just thought it was a regular jersey so i put it on took a picture and it was actually sam ty who was like take that jersey off it's signed i'm like it's not signed and then it was like Oh shit! It's signed, maybe, but I don't know. I don't know who signed it. Simon, you well, got any conspiracies? I was gonna say, Alistair, you wore your signed jersey as well, and now all the signatures have just run from your sweat, mm, right? So it's just yeah. completely worthless. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can't sell that one on. Although, I mean, Black's got a sweaty sign. Is that is the Sven Coombs jersey signed? 
It is, yeah. He he signed it though after he played in it. So uh in theory the, fresh. the sweat wouldn't have yeah, yeah. Also if you since smell it, it does not smell fresh, by the way. Both of you got your signed jerseys hand delivered to you by, you know, the big corporations. I have a conspiracy that the mystery raffles for the jerseys are actually impossible to win. Like they say the bots got them, they say you missed out. I'm still yet to meet someone that actually won one, but just saying. That's true. That's true. You know, we all spent our co- we all wasted our coins on an impossible raffle. I like it. <laughs> it was all Nellis. I bought a lot of raffle tickets and I didn't win any, so there you go. Conspiracy solved. No, what was our what was our verb? Dan, exposed. Dan Cooper exposed. Dan Cooper, there we go. Uh, Dan Cooper brought up Nellis in in chat. Uh, what, Ooh, I've what's got a good your, one about Nellis. Yeah, what's your best <laughs> Nellis uh, conspiracy? I, I feel like there's there's gotta be something good with him. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this one, I have evidence. Um, so <laughs> I actually believe that Rivals is a data farming uh, app owned by the Chinese company that owns TikTok. This is their new, that you know, mm. TikTok's getting banned. So this is their new way of, of harvesting our data is through rivals. Now, John Nellis is owned by the Chinese TikTok company. He's just their slave, basically. So he's being forced against his will. I mean, have you seen his so rare videos lately? The passion's gone from his eyes. He's in a white walled cell, like there's no furniture. He's... He's in a basement in Shanghai somewhere and he's just forced to do these so rare videos week after week. And then as a result, you know, he's kind of sold his soul. And that's why he gets so many views when he goes and cooks, you know, a Danish for a, uh, you know, a substitute teacher or whatever the, his videos are. <laughs> <laughs> Can anyone def- def- refute that conspiracy? I can't. The only, the only one person we need, we need to get Alex, his his videographer. If we can get him, if we can just get him, then, then we'll know exist. for sure. Mm. He's AI. I did meet him. He's not a real person. <laughs> oh, you did meet him. Okay. I did, yeah. It's a really good AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Michael Jackson hologram. It was, he was but AI. I feel like if, if, if we could kidnap Alex, we could get to the bottom of some of this. There you go. Okay. That could be John's next video. Yeah. (laughs) I like this one that Nellis's videos are fake. Hologram Zidane. Zidane is a hologram. They're deep fakes, huh? Yeah. I don't know about any of you guys, but meeting Zidane is like my worst nightmare. Not because I don't like Zidane, but just like that experience of having to meet a guy who clearly just, hey, how you going? I don't know. Right. Just, yeah. And he's, I watched that he's video kind of, and I was like, oh, not for me. Thanks. <laughs> I agree. He's kind of intimidating, first of all. And second of all, he doesn't mm. give a shit at all about meeting me. And, <laughs> and like personally, like he's cool and all, but like it's not like, uh, I don't know. He's not like some God to me that I need to meet or something. So just like all of those things combined, it creates quite the awkward experience, I feel like. Mm, yeah, what do you talk about? So oh, I love when you kick hey, all that time. Uh, something about a headbutt. Uh, yeah, there's some terrible headbutt. like that he's never heard before. <laughs> yeah, the, the one that got me was, and this is actually back to Nellis. He did this like years ago when he was when they were like, imagine the things that so rare have access to that you could, you could have a Zoom call with Messi, and it's like, what the fuck are you gonna say to him in a Zoom call? Like, man, you got a that dog's pretty big. Does yeah. it eat a lot of dog food? <laughs> so, so the owner is that your JPEGs, iPad? Like, right? what, like, what was that, Simon? I own all these JPEGs, right? And so I can play them in a fantasy competition. <laughs> um, but wait, they have utility year round. Um, Are you interested in JPEGs, Lino? <laughs> <laughs> I call him Lino. <laughs> Lionel, the layman. It's like Lionel Richie, right? The same pronunciation. <laughs> oh, That's man. right. Sean did do one with uh, Aiden Morris. That's the one we all wanted to do. But oh, is there a video of that? That would be great to watch. There is. It's on the So Rare uh, YouTube channel. Oh, it's got sixteen go, views already. Go. 
I think I think the ones that I like most are uh, who's the guy that uh, that plays wing back for uh, Houston. He was on uh, Taco Slayers, Dorsey, right? Yeah, yeah Griffin, Griffin Dorsey. Dorsey. Griffin, and he just he just seemed like kind of a cool dude, and it made for like a decent interaction. But like, Messi is like this super famous pop star, basically, and it's very different, very different lives. Very, very difficult for me to connect on any level with him. Well, he's speaking Spanish the whole time. That makes it tough. Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you walk in and you're like, hola. Hola, no. mi amigo. <laughs> <laughs> Me llamo Andy. Andres. <laughs> With the hat That's on about well. it. That's about all I got. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah. Hasta luego. <laughs> oh man. What do you th- what do you think? Like if you really did talk to Lionel Messi and he was like, So how did you-? somehow you have a conversation where he's like, So how are you here? And you're like, Oh, I I play so rare. He's like, Oh, what's that? And you're just like, Oh God. Well, you into crypto? Yeah. No. I'd just be like, I yeah. broke in. I'm here illegally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying, yeah. Make a wish, yeah. <laughs> I have cancer. It's horrible. <laughs> Lino. Yeah. Por favor. Well, that's what the hat's for. <laughs> oh, man. This is going about as uh, as well as we thought it would. Yeah. Ian said, if I met getting... PK, there's no way I couldn't mention him fumbling Shakira and calling him an idiot. Yeah. That would be good. Are you just getting yeah. sweaty underneath your hats? Generating a little sweat? It's like um, it's like a heat I've cap. Got a little, I've got like a bit of an air. Like I've, I've kind of engineered mm-hmm. a bit of an air. Oh, air hole in mine. Ooh, Ooh a unicorn back. now. Yeah. Mm. You look like a... Uh, like this one better. Like a narwhal. I, no, he looks like one of those like uh, genies or something. Like uh, when women wrap their hair in the towel. Yeah, a little mm. bit. Yeah. Black's literally cooking. <laughs> yeah, I'm cooking up there, man. <laughs> Woo! Let him cook. <laughs> Put an egg up there. Uh, Yours does look tight. I did say it's. It, you really, you really got it on there. I was gonna say you. Yeah, you needed some slack to like. Maybe if I can get a little hole going in here, just to. Get a little little air going. Eh, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyway. Love it. So I have one that's actually very serious, and I think it's actually true. Okay. Have you ever bid on an auction, and you thought you bid, like, some fiat amount, and then it changes because ETH changed? In the like in the couple of seconds since you made the yeah, bid. so you're like, oh, I bid fifty dollars for this, and all of a sudden it says like fifty one oh eight, and you're just like, I don't think I did that, but whatever. Mm. So Sora take all those little bits. Ooh, microtransactions. Yeah, it's like office, and space. they they basically mm. add them all up, and then they send them to Opta to ensure that the appropriate players are scored down for the threshold grinders. There like that you go. Funds, wow, layers within layers. Yeah. So that that those little bits of money then go to Opta to save the threshold revenue. Or why, threshold would, why does it have to go to Opta? Why can't Nicholas just use that to pay for lunch? Because that's like a big part about working at So Rare is they pay for your lunches. The free lunch? Yeah. You know who else is paying for lunch today? You guys. <laughs> so you mentioned it earlier, Laird. I think it's I think it's worth talking. I think it's worth bringing up. I can't I can't miss that layout there. Yeah. That's so perfect. on last week's so rare down down under episode, we talked about saving rivals, and this morning we got Mr. Andrew M. Laird to play the first game of rivals in how long? Years? It, Months? Years? Years. Decades. <laughs> Decades. Yeah. yeah. Since my kids weren't born yet and they're in yeah. college now. 
Exactly. And all we needed was just a little bit of a taste of the lunch wheel. But it didn't go so well for you guys. It was actually one of the most exciting kind of lunch wheel rivals games I think we've ever had. The it, was, it might have been ever. It was yeah. pretty good, game. yeah. Yeah. So I think Simon and I kind of went mostly Man U stacks pretty much. Black went out and bought a super rare just so he could win the lunch wheel, which is pretty crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I did not, but I'll just, I'll take the slander. <laughs> um, Man, you will go 2 0 down, come back 3 2. It's all looking horrible for us when uh, there's a last minute pen. So basically, Anana gets guillotined. So I think I'm out of the running. Simon's out of the running. I think Black and Laird pretty much have it in the bag the the best was we were messaging about it and you were like we were comparing scores and you were like as long as onana doesn't concede again you will like i'll win and then literally seconds later the penalty gets called i was like let's go (laughs) yeah so then and then you sent me i I will admit a very great gif of winnie the pooh like getting ready to eat because you thought you had the lunch roll in the bag and you should never make assumptions when it comes to yeah, lunch. It ain't over till it's over, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, last minute uh, Enzo assist, a little bailout assist, and I go straight to the top of the leaderboard. So I'll show you, oh, I'm going to share the lunch wheel link here. How do I do that? I need to share a link with you. This is the gift that I sent. <laughs> <laughs> I was so ready. Winnie the Pooh eating the lunch wheel. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll send you send you a link to the lunch wheel. I'll let you guys spin the lunch wheel on my behalf because I'm a gracious winner. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, let's see here. It's um, uh, Laird, it's meatspin.com, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely replace that photo in the middle with something else. <laughs> Where did you send this? Uh, in the private chat to you, in, in this app thing that we're using. Oh, oh that's oh. cute. Never used that before. Just yeah. goes to show that Rivals isn't dead. You know, I got back from work at 3 a.m. and I had to wake up at 5.45 to check my Rivals lineup. So, you know, if I think Lunch He's Wheel is the solution <laughs> for Rivals. There it is. There it is. So, so what exactly are the rules of the Lunch Wheel? In terms of the wheel itself? Yes. There's, there's The only rule is that you just have to obey it, you know. Um, basically, whatever it lands on, <clears throat> the loser mm-hmm. will then have to buy for me as the winner. So it could be a delicious lunch. It could be an entire pineapple. It could be, you know, it could be any number of things. And I've just got to – you just have to obey the rules of it. So we're hoping for a jar of mayonnaise, basically. Yeah, or pineapple on pizza. Oh, so the, the pineapple on pizza is just a pineapple pizza. So no, nothing else, just – just pineapple. Wait, what? <laughs> it's no ham and pineapple. It's just pineapple. Oh, okay, okay. I yeah. thought you were. I thought you were making a pizza out of pineapple. That like pineapple sauce, cheese. That sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy actually has a conspiracy that the lunch wheel is rigged. There's yeah, different you might have a point. Different percentages for each slice on the on the wheel. Yeah, it's kind of like the um the the uh, the mystery boxes that we've all been opening and leveling up, baby. <laughs> we did call it on last week's set. We said this week there's going to be an inordinate amount of content creators that are opening super rares and rares out of their out of the loot boxes, and then Shocking, for the next right? three years. Maybe one person will lim- win a limited, right. you know, every couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. Her- so Harry we, if you didn't starts... get one last week, it's never yeah. happening. Harry uh, Trades just right. got exposed. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Is there, that will, baby. is there a preferred landing spot for you? Oh, look, I mean, yeah, pretty much anything but the jar of mayonnaise I'm happy with. <laughs> That's sloppy really the, steaks would be a good one. Sloppy steaks is good. Now, I did add an, an American um, 
option in there just in case one of you guys won it, which was the White Castle 10 pack. Um, so oh. if I win that one, I might be in trouble, but I might have to try and find the alternative. The Australian I can probably, version. I can probably send you some somehow. Yeah, that would be good. I mean, if you can manage to post me internationally a 10 pack of White Castle sliders, they'll still be in the same condition, let's be honest. Here's the deal though. They I sell will, frozen, I will eat them. They they sell frozen microwavable. Yeah. Uh microwavable. Oh, yes. Yeah. White oh, yeah. Castle sandwiches. So uh I'll if that happens, I'll we'll find a way to make it happen. Okay, well now I'm kind of hoping for that one because that's some good content right there. If we want if we want ever want to hit a million views, that's the one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we got. Congratulations, and here we go. <laughs> Meatspin.com. Oh! oh. <laughs> Fuck off. Oh, my hat fell off. All right, Curry. I must say, it's we not very so exciting, close. but now I'm looking forward to lunchtime. <laughs> Oh, anticlimax, anticlimax. I, All right, moving on. <laughs> I love the lunch wheel. I could not watch somebody try to eat mayonnaise. And I love, I really like mayonnaise. Like, but like, I put can't. It on, put it on 1.5 speed and just get it done. Oh. Just pretend it's something else, Laird. Pretend it's uh, ice cream. I with a giant jar of mayonnaise right next to him. <laughs> Take the label off and just have at it. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's that Steph Curry and his grandmother. <laughs> nice. That's a that's a good. Billy Dilly right said, "Real talk: frozen microwave white castles are not bad." I will eat some. If you send me some, I'll eat them. Right. Maybe I can find them in Australia. Here, I'm sure there's like some weird store that sells them for all the freaks out here. <laughs> It's been a long time since I even had White Castle, <laughs> and it wasn't a mic. I've got a couple, couple of quick, uh, quick hitter uh, um, conspiracies. Uh, one incredibly obvious: Laird getting uh, Scandinavian teams, Midgetland, into challengers. We all know that to be true. Yep. Very, very obvious. Neymar is hurt. Also, very ob- obvious one. Um, and Laird, you I actually didn't. had you had a conspiracy that you shared with me um, a while back that Sorer specifically puts DNP lineups up against Nacho um, and and rivals. Um, so he's all, always wins and climbs the leaderboard because he was like at the top at the beginning, and and he's a content creator, and they like made it so that he would he would do well. What have we got to do to start? Getting some favorable Sorare conspiracies, Simon. Like, what do we, what, what can we do on stream that's going to get us in Sorare's good books? Do we need to move to China? I'll move to China. <laughs> I'm on board. Yeah, I just don't want to open up another level up. I just want a card. Come on. If you could move to somewhere in China, where would it be? I was going to go say Simon moved about twelve times in the last month, so I feel like moving to China is just on the next on the list. Yeah, I'd move to Wu- I'd- Wuhan. It's three towns in one. It's, it's good value. <laughs> oh, I reckon I'd just no. keep growing out the mustache. So I get one of those cool Chinese ones where it's like Ooh. really long. Fu Manchu. Yeah. You've got a long way to go, I think. <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day. That's true. That's true. Simon, you got any uh, sweet conspiracies for us? Um, well, staying on the Asia route, uh, do we really think that Quincy Promes actually has dirt on like Joe Biden? Like, has he got, <laughs> is he actually unable to be caught? Because this is a man that's racking up illegal activities. Charge up, charge. Yeah. Everyone knows about it and he just seems like he can't be caught. Well, he's in jail now, right? Is he? Who like, is he really? Saying, yeah, there you go. I I watch your Spartak lineups this weekend. I reckon you might see him on the bench. <laughs> Someone in a bright yellow wig running out with similar tattoos. Just saying. Biden's onto it. Don't you worry. <laughs> I love Get the un- man com- back to Russia. <laughs> the completely unnecessary connection to Joe Biden. <laughs> <Part> right. of- <laughs> I'm at Quincy. <laughs> 
I like that one. That's Scott's that's what's up? Oh, I like this one. Paco says Nacho is PK's brother. That makes sense. That makes sense. Surely scosman has got some good conspiracies for us. Surely. Surely. Some late night Donsky's conspiracies. <laughs> the uh Felix said joining in late. Oh, Cole Palmer making it difficult to leave the pub early. Yeah, I suppose so. That makes sense. That last what do we think about the shit. I actually think that the Friday night curse is just because all players are just shit faced on a Friday night when they play and they're just terrible. The Friday night curse is real and it's because everyone's drunk. Already the Saturday Saturday morning be worse when you're hungover. Although I've I've played pretty well hungover. I think you'd be, mm. obviously you'd be worse drunk. Being hungover can be a bit of a superpower when you play sports. I've that's, really can be. That's been my history with it, yeah. Because you're like, oh, there's no way I can play my best ever game of, you know, croquet today. And then you go out there and just smash it and everyone's smash it, yeah. loving it. Mm. Cro croquet? Croquet. Is, like, <laughs> is that like the game where you hit the ball with the little sticks? Yeah. Oh. And you're really good at it when you're hungover. <laughs> I didn't think uh, people actually played that. To be honest, I thought it was just like a, like it was in my grandparents' garage and like. Is that a conspiracy? Oh, Does croquet yeah. exist? Can anyone mm. confirm that croquet exists? Mm -hmm. We're really getting into the deep shit now. Yeah, is, we're really you know, going in. Uh, you sure you don't Andy, want a tinfoil hat, lad? Yeah, Andy, what you were saying about you uh, playing sports, um, I'm bringing this back to Sora slightly. How do you feel? about getting a second opportunity for a once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> um uh what do you mean? Uh like like should I go for it or or do you think you are, do you think that you are actually banned from doing it so that they don't turn out to be liars that somebody has had a once in a lifetime experience two times? Oh, that's a good conspiracy. Conspiracy, actually. Um, like they, I don't know. They I don't know. Up. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you win, but like, if you win, and they're like, "What do we do?" We said once I mean, in a lifetime. What position did you play last time when you were over there running around? Like left back or right back, where you know. All right, wherever. well, play you up front. There's there's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Play up front at yeah. airfield. Yeah. See, it's all in the fine print. Got to read the fine you know, print, it, guys. It was funny because when we were flying over, uh, Dylan and J James and I were talking about, like, we should just be total pricks and be like, nope, I'm playing up top. Playing up top, bitches. And, you know, uh, yeah. And just all, all I want to do is, is is score a goal. So I'm just going to stand up there and uh, ruin everyone's day, ruin everyone's time. Yeah, but you know the matrix too well, Black. You knew you know left backs where it's at, really. You got that peak score in you. Right, right. Yeah. I just I played sideways passes to Harry Trades and uh <laughs> you know ran a lot. <laughs> the um Yeah, I'm curious to see if, if that but isn't that what Nellis basically did? Didn't he just play up front? He's like, I'm up here, guys. <laughs> Uh no he 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 played he played all all over kind of okay yeah he's that fine. wasn't really him come on guys <laughs> <laughs> I like that, that it, might, it might not have been he was he he was he was a lot different on that trip than other times that I've met him mm, you know like, uh, life in his eyes <laughs> yeah I don't know if it was like the fame was getting to him or if it was like or if it just was not really him like you said maybe. It was like yeah. a bot or something, but he was much different than when I, I met him in Orlando. So it was before he signed the contract. Right. <laughs> Do you think he's just like super business like because Alex was around? He's like, oh, sorry, my boss is here. I can't uh, can't mess around that much. No, I don't think it was anything like that. I think that it, it was actually like a conspiracy of some sort. All right. New mm -hmm. conspiracy. Nellis hates black. Ooh, that could have been. That's one letter away from being a, a very serious. <laughs> that could have been really bad. 
<laughs> that's not a third S on now. <laughs> Be really good. careful with with how you say that. <laughs> yeah. I just pulled it up in time. That was a good save, Sami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get rid of your hats. Uh, yeah. <laughs> these, these... Clip it. Everyone's clip it. <laughs> There's the title of the show. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I can't believe Simon said this. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Oh, no. Broke the stream. Oh, man. Broke the stream. Oh, dear. Oh. Did you not do that? Was it? Hmm? You didn't? Oh, I thought you closed it. Oh, my God. It, it was knew. Nicholas. It was... <laughs> he shut <Yeah>. it down. <laughs> Oh man, was it weird playing that game at Anfield with a bunch of people that were like filming themselves? Hmm. Was that a weird experience? I, like, obviously, we have a podcast, but I always feel I can't. I can't bring myself to be the guy that's like vlogging. I don't know about you guys, but that like, hey guys, I'm here, and you know that I can't do that. That's not for Alistair, me. You made us dress up into a pink like <laughs> suit last week. What are you talking about? Oh, I just can't public. bring myself to film. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, those are, it just wasn't your clothes for the day? <laughs> the, Al, Alistair, it was it was interesting because you kind of see how the, the sausage is made a little bit. Like uh in the dressing room, I was sitting next to Fiago and he was like, Hey guys, I'm here at uh Anfield, blah blah blah. And then he'd be like, all right, mess that take up, and then he would do it again, and then oh. like do it again a third time, and then finally he'd he'd get it right, and then you know, so Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That that yeah. kind of thing, you know. A little strange, but also like kind of expected to. I guess, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you should have done a vlog, Black. That would have watched that. That would have been great. <laughs> it would have been horrible. And get one of those GoPros that like looks at your face, and you just put it on your head, and you right. just as he's running yeah, around, just, it's just, just live like commentate. Make, make a face the whole time, like you know, just something really weird, just. Probably wouldn't even need to do that. Like if I'm actually playing a sport, I'm gonna have a weird face when when I'm doing it. So <laughs> my O face from the dressing room. Uh, poor old Nellis. <laughs> Boy, that could have been bad. All right. It did remind me. Do we me have of any more conspiracies? Have we have we Andy slammed them about all? The name of his burner account. Yeah. Um, you don't want to share that with see. them? Oh, oh, my burner account. No, I don't want to ruin that yet because I might still do it, and I haven't, I haven't purchased the, the thing. Um, <clears throat> not that one. The, the, oh, that's that's a great one. Too. Oh, which one are you talking about? Just that you were going to use a burner account and call it white. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, no, um, the, what I was actually wanting to do, and I'll go ahead and share it, and if, if somebody wants to take the reins on this, they're welcome to do so, but if you go out onto uh, Ethereum name service, there's a certain uh, .eth name that's not purchased of a community member that's very negative about the platform. It's something, mm. uh, and his, his name on Twitter is even whatever .eth. And he doesn't actually own the namespace, so somebody else could buy it, and they could be that person. So, um, Ooh. and then he can dollars. sue that person on Twitter for right. yeah misrepresenting the dot ETH. Oh, I yes. like that. This we could bring this person down. We could Nic we Nicholas's could. burner account. We could bring him down. Yeah. Uh, Mike Baston has asked, how many takes did tackling Simon on the beach need? Great question. One take. <laughs> we were prof very professional. There was also one guy on the beach who was watching us do the whole thing. So I guess i got to go back on my statement of doing stuff in public on camera. Um, I guess I'm I'm a loser after all. God damn it. Exposed immediately, almost. Yeah. Simon was very worried about that tackle. He was like... I have work in the morning. I have, <laughs> I've got, I have a basketball final this weekend. Please don't hurt me. I think we did a pretty good job. Can I ask where the idea to grow the mustache came from? Um, good luck. You know, it's a new um, 
with the challenger contenders, I thought, you know, a new era, a new me, um, and ride it out so far hasn't gone well at all. So I'll probably shave it straight after this. Um, this is the first time I've really aired it out in public and just got, um, lots of negative feedback. So, um, whether it's here this time next week, we will see. I, I think it was a, uh, was it a Seinfeld episode? I don't remember. But I grew a mustache once. And I uh, went out and was visiting my cousin in San Diego. And she didn't know that I grew this mustache until I showed up at the airport and I had this mustache. And she looks at me. And your mustache is 10 times fuller than any mustache I could grow. So you can picture this, this mustache that I was attempting to. And there she was just like, it. oh, taking a little vacation <laughs> from yourself. And I was like... <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I'll take that. Oh, I like this. That mustache needs a level up. <laughs> <laughs> he needs needs to win some boxes first. <laughs> there is a um a charity in Australia called Movember, which I, I can't remember what they're raising money for, but every uh, do they have the same thing in, in the States? They do, yes. Yeah. They do. Okay. I, I I love the fact that like Simon in Movember, everyone's like Good on you, man. Like, yeah, you're really doing the thing for the cause. And then every other month of the year, it's like, nice mustache, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting in early for November. <clears throat> this is all the yeah. pre-work. <laughs> Simo said he was clean shaven when he started setting his lineups. So is it is it November there as well? Like, is November? Yeah. Okay, so how do you feel about the people who grow, like, a full beard? And then, like the last week, shave it for just the mustache. Jail. Yeah. As long as we're on the <laughs> I same think page. The, the here. rules are you meant to start from scratch, November one, right? There's no. I thought like, so. Yeah, and you can't grow a beard. That's just. I didn't. Like, I didn't realize there were. Now. I didn't realize there were rules, guys. There's so. rules. There's rules to everything. That sounds like someone who grew a beard and then shaved most of it <laughs> on the last day of November. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Maybe we should do a So Rare Movember this year and all content creators can grow a mustache. And we can all take a holiday from ourselves. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> oh, man. Do you guys think that it's more likely that Pavel or Pranksy works for So Rare? Ooh, I'm gonna. I think it's got to be Pavel. I think. I mean, uh, it would make sense that Pranksy just they just paint they just paint themselves and they every week. So that does make a lot of sense, actually. We definitely um, need some Pranksy um, uh, conspiracies, considering he's the greatest manager on the platform, better than all other whales. Um, Yep. I mean, he's the love- alpha dog right now. He's the total mm-hmm. alpha dog. He's yeah. He's pegging all other whales. <laughs> whales can be pegged. Uh, Pranksy is the man. I love that uh, the week that he won all the MLS competitions, and there were so many comments that were like, how are we meant to compete with this? He's got an LAFC stack. So rare is broken. It's like... You could all have LAFC stacks, and they've also not been very good every single week of the year, except this one. Like right. that's that's stacking, guys. But I just love that they're all like, he has access to things that we don't. LAFC stacks. Pranksy's just so smart, and he knew to play it that week, and and you know he's just he, he's that alpha that yeah. he knew to play that stack this week. I played my Hugo Lloris against Colorado, who are one of the worst teams in the league, and he conceded three. So I guess I just suck. Moron. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, you've you've been here in so rare for a long time. Yeah. Has there ever been a better manager than Pranksy? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Yeah. He's got the money. He's got the knowledge. He's got everything like you would want in a so rare manager. And quite frankly, like, is there a better man? <laughs> <laughs> is it a man? Uh, the person that I met at Anfield that was like his community manager or something was a man. Um, but I don't think that was actually Pranksy, but maybe it was. 
Mm, I think so like, he grows a really good mustache. Like was a man because now not or just previous like when you met them. I don't know what you're saying, but uh <laughs> the person that I met, I think I think Jimmer was referring to him as Jokesy. And uh I don't know that that guy liked that very much. <laughs> Cranksy, jokesy. <I> <laughs> That is a classic. I can just I can hear Jimmer's voice calling him jokesy right now. Yeah. I love it. Oh, I mean, yeah, Rico Roxy Man brings up Roxy. Of course. Does he exist? Is he dead? That's the that's the actual conspiracy going on right now. This is the guy that hasn't opened his rewards in like three months, right? He he finally opened some of them. That's the funny what? thing. What? Just some of them. Need that level up. Did he he really open some of them? I'm some of them. Why would you open That's some and bizarre. not others? Was there any right? Like, were, were they only like stars that he opened, or I, I think it's actually the opposite. Like, most of them were not huge cards, if I remember. I always open my one reward a month as soon as I get it. <laughs> I mean, keep in mind it's a lot. Oh, I like this. Roxy is Kate Middleton. <laughs> I think I did hear about that on uh, uh, making a double double. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these were, yeah, like a week ago. So these are, I think he had like 150, something like 150 rewards to open. But like, this is not 150. That's probably 30. That's wild to me. 2,939,000. Sheesh. I think I think you might have hit the nail on the head, Lair, that he just does it just it's such a small drop in the ocean for him. He just he so might like, go, oh, I'll open some reward. Yeah. Oh, I'm bored of that already. Yeah, just like yeah. But they set lineups. Surely someone else does it, right? Um, yeah, Pranksy's assistant does them all. Right. Um yeah, didn't open either of the Ricky Pooge super rares. Um oh I like this from Quinny. Wait. Uh, where was the beginning of that? <laughs> he definitely Ooh. has a pay-as-you-go phone and is running from the law, opening rewards oh when God. he's sure he won't be tracked. Roxy is Quincy Promes. <gasps> <laughs> and he's actually in jail for so rare multi-accounting. <laughs> <laughs> What's the sea dog part on Roxy? Roxy C Dog. Dot C Dog. Mind yeah. You. What's that all about? Mm. It's got Roxy a mean C something. Dog. Roxy Pat Dog. Roxy Love Dog. What do you think? Like, how much money do you need to have <clears throat> to spend $3 million? Great question. On JPEGs. Mm. Like, do you think it's somebody like a like a billionaire, or somebody who really only has like five million dollars? But then they're just like say, total. Degen. If he plays Sorare, he probably has three million and two dollars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go up, baby. Buying the right. dip. Hmm. Oh, I like this. Sandra does his lineups. Sandra. Is she Sandra Sea Dog? <laughs> oh. oh, Sandra. If Roxy doesn't rock and Pranksy doesn't prank. Hmm. Quincy, not one shit. What? I don't know. Check the subscriber list, Quinny, I guess. See if Quincy's in there. It's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. Lord, I, was there, I like hurt my head trying to figure what, that out. Was there any good conspiracies in the uh, uh, Twitter thread that, that you posted? Do you want the real answer? Or a couple. Uh, I'll take any answer. Is it? Do you want me to tell you the, the true creativity of the Sora, Sora community? <laughs> um, Cosmo well, said that the conspiracy is it's just a game. Ooh, I gotcha. Like he cooked Ooh. your ass with that, Larry. 
<laughs> well, some, uh, somebody, where was that earlier? Roxy's the only person I convinced that this is really just for fun. Bill. Uh, let's see here. Um, the Colonel said that the top end rewards aren't really randomly selected from a pool, but I don't have the official company line on that. Yeah, yeah I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, <laughs> there's like a to me. it's a if then statement, and it's like if content creator you finish first, then you know Mbappe. If Alistair mm. finish first. You know, random I, Kaylee. It's because we keep that, making fun of them. It's because we keep doing these little videos. Ha 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 ha. Very funny. So rare, silly. And Nicholas is basically just like, get that guy. Take he's him way down. too serious for you. He he hates. Yeah. He's in. He's in Cecenia's DMs telling him to, you know, sit out a week that Simon plays him. Every time Simon plays him in a good lineup, you know, Cecenia's off on holiday. I mean, if anyone, if there's a conspiracy, it's that Simon it literally is cursed. I don't think I've met. You talk about Pranksy being the most successful manager of all time. I think Simon has to be up there with one of the least successful. <laughs> and it's a conspiracy. So I was thinking of this like the other day because you can make the argument like in fantasy sports, like, oh, if you like simulate this out a million times, like you'll win 90% of the time. But obviously 10% of that million you won't win. And I think Simon's in that 10% from now on, and he just has to stay long enough to get out of the 10%. The problem is I think it's going to take 500 years to get out. And so... <laughs> well, Len, I've been on this platform for about three years and I've won like two tier ones, tier twos maybe. So I've got some work to do. I've got some serious... And they're both terrible, terrible tier, tier ones as well. It was like the Wonder, the wonder Kid curse, like... This guy's got so much potential. Here he is. Proud owner. You guys, you guys know what I love? I love a random conspiracy that calls out a community member for being in jail with Chris, Quincy Promise. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually love this one. Hoodwink is Cecenia. Ooh, what, was, what was Cecenia's big issue with you calling out the Scottish League for being trash? <laughs> Why did Cecilia <laughs> care so much about that? That was strange. Yeah, that. You're punishing the wrong guy. Simon had nothing to do with that Scottish <laughs> League slander. <laughs> hmm. That's a good point, Andy. <laughs> Seems strange. Just over here debunking conspiracies. Fair enough. Uh, there was one from Sower Soul. That said, the, that conspiracy was there was never an issue with Opta data for the K League. Sora just created a test case to see what would happen in the event of data coverage issues and to prepare a backup plan. The K League players were being used as lab rats. Mm. Ooh. That's yeah. a pretty good one. I. Well, we've I already debunked right. that one. It's, it's the Opta guy just left. He just. He just left one day and didn't tell anyone. And there's only no, one guy there. No call, no show. <laughs> exactly. I, no, well, yeah, I think that he was, he stood up to the system, said, no, we should score the games fairly. You know, we shouldn't take preference. And then, as we know, got, goes MIA a couple of hours later. Yeah. Would be great if the K League was just their testing ground for stuff. I don't know what else they could test on the K League. Yeah, I was gonna say, what else could they work? <laughs> well, I mean, you could you could test out like a I don't know, maybe like a new matrix or something, right? Um, changes kind to of the doing matrix. that now, aren't they? Because they've got a different provider. Oh, that's true. Yeah. May oh, maybe maybe they are. Oh, mm, there you go. You might be onto something there. <laughs> I think just think there was a possible there was a point where they were like. We can't have Cecenia, like some random guy in the K League, be the best player on in this game. So, mm. what do we do to cut this down? Yeah, and the first solution was whatever. This Op Opta can't score anymore. Sorry, guys. They fired Op Opta Kim. They fired fired his ass, and they yep. Nicholas went in there and was just like, 
hey, we can't have this shit anymore. Yeah. Get him out of here. And they fired him. And it was really hard to hire a new guy because they knew Nicholas was breathing down their neck. And mm, I think they might have done that across the platform because, I mean, Carlos Hill's been pretty rubbish lately. Mm. I think they're just stars will be stars and they're just kneecapping every player that's, you know, got the audacity to score well whoa, in whoa, you know, whoa, contenders whoa, 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 or challenges. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You said they? Who is they? Well, that's the question, isn't it? <laughs> Pranks his assistant. Hmm. They, them. Yeah. <laughs> Jokesy's going around <laughs> knocking on these. <laughs> yeah, see, look, now everyone's everyone's figured it out. You know, they got Sugawara this week. Julian Desart hasn't been quite as good. It's because he's, you know, a filthy challenger boy. Cole Palmer all of a sudden's amazing. Coincidence? Somebody mentioned LUD, LDU uh, Keto. Nobody's ever actually watched one of their game. Alexander Alvarado, another guy that uh, went from being god of the platform to doesn't even play in games anymore. Nicholas got to him. He yeah. To him. Yep. Well, the Opta guy just sold his Alvarado and all of a sudden back to dust. Right. Could be the set, set you know, Dusty Doosan. I think of all the conspiracies, that's the one that I think I've subscribed to the most, is that they're kneecapping these filthy challenger and contender losers. Stars will be stars. I'm I'm uncomfortable because it's too right. Like it mm. makes it's almost just like that's hitting a little too close, I think. Yeah. It's gonna I be think weird. it's time to get the foil lead. <laughs> You're Laird, just as scared you, as the rest of us. Don't try not cool. Laird, when you leave your house this afternoon, like definitely look over both shoulders because I think I'm I think I gotta go straight PSU fans too and just never leave the house again. No. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if this stream just gets cut out. You know, we've said too much. We we will not That's, be silenced. Yeah, it's the lawyer that shows up at my door and is like, "We're gonna have to take that computer." Thank you very much. Larry gets <laughs> Larry gets swatted in the middle of this stream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. Improv king over here. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Black's hair is actually a Toblerone. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I love it. I'm here for it. I can confirm yes, that it is. Uh, I think it's chocolate, isn't it? Toblerone, yeah. Got a lot of grays in there. I don't know, man. I don't think Tol you... Toblerone or whatever has gray chocolate. There were like a, a few pyramid. Years ago, a few years ago, there was a there was very definitely a special on giant Toblerones at the supermarket because Simon, myself, and my sister. My dad, we all got giant Toblerones from our mom for Christmas. <laughs> she was like, you guys love Toblerones. And we're like, literally never eaten a Toblerone in our lives. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much for the giant one. I appreciate it. 100% half price. Is that, price is that like Swiss? Back. Is that Swiss chocolate? Toblerone? Yeah, it's pretty good. I was a fan by the end. <laughs> like a three foot long Toblerone. They're Swiss. You're right. Coincidentally, my brother's favorite candy. I think Scosmo's thinking of a Hershey's Kiss. I don't think he's thinking of. Tobler. Oh yeah, this would definitely be more of a Hershey's Kiss for sure. And mm. then you like pull the little thing out. Yeah. And then and then you get some incredibly bland, awful chocolate inside. Yeah. Mike Passon said, "I get he gets a giant one from his mother-in-law every Christmas." <laughs> Wait, are you my sister's husband? <laughs> Um, did you know that you can get a giant personalized <laughs> top of the room? Oh, that's excellent. Oh, God, I hope my mom's not watching this. Because <laughs> I'm getting one for Christmas. <laughs> so, realistically, guys. Why he's holding it? <laughs> if you had that thing, say hello to my little friend, right? Yeah, uh, that's totally. If you, ha if you had one my of wife. Those, She's very sick. How long would it take you to eat it? I think you'd die by the end of it, wouldn't you? Four and a half kilos feels like a lot. 
I don't I want to see his lose. facial expression. I think he's looking like he's looking at it in such a loving way. Yeah. <laughs> see, they've just cut off the eyes. He thinks it's a he weapon. Is... <laughs> I think it was actually he was like holding a baby, and yep. they took it a out, like baby. they photoshopped it out, and put this giant Oliver Toblerone. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Fucking Oliver with his long baby. <laughs> Holding it missile style. Bad parenting. Get it on the lunch wheel. Yep, absolutely. Just what we need on the lunch wheel. A $120 thing of chocolate. <laughs> half price though, half price. <laughs> Gokka dot eighth. Oh, they... <laughs> there was our fart. Yeah. Oh, it's Wemmy's baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Coming to a reward box near you. <laughs> So do do we think that there it's just going to be level ups forever? Surely it can't be. Surely the platform ends if it's just level ups for the next however In many the boxes. Months. Especially if people are opening like 12, 13 boxes a week. I'm sure I'm pretty sure Sean opened 32 level ups last weekend. Great. Did did his well, wrist hurt well. after that? I mean a lot of clicking. Is that what is that what leveling up is for you, Black? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go level up. <laughs> Where my laptop at? Yeah, I, I won't. I won't comment on that. It might be. <laughs> Dear God. What else could they? Put, what else could they put in a box though? Hold on. How many Sorare coins would you use to get a giant Toblerone? 100 k I mean, they always, you know, people are always saying, how much is a coin worth? You know, they're comparing it with the jerseys, but it's a signed jersey. This is finally the, you know, we can... We did it. This is the gold standard that we... we (laughs) How many Toblerones can you buy per coin? Now we Mm -hmm. finally have a value. Right. So why do you this play this where, game? Well, the this the coin to Toblerone conversion rate is excellent these days, and so just show up somewhere. Look what I got! Yeah. <laughs> how, oh, man, how did you get that? Well, let me right tell now. you. Yeah, you like crypto and JPEGs and <laughs> Toblerone? <laughs> I got the site for you. <laughs> uh, one coin, one coin per triangle. Per triangle. That's, <laughs> that still pretty works out pretty like pretty favorably. I think that's a pretty good dollar value. Oh. We got some Ooh. balloons going on here. I love it. Wow. How did that happen? What is this conspiracy? <laughs> Wait, how did you do the, the fireworks? Um, oh. I, I mean, you can try the heart, right? There it is. Oh, there it is. Wow. Just the next half an hour of the podcast is just us. How many Sora coins to free Nellis? That's a different currency. <laughs> you need Yuan for that one. He's never getting free. No. He's never getting free. <laughs> anyway. I'm not even sure I know what Top of tastes like, but I kind of want one now. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's like a... Nutty, I think it's like nuts and honey and and nougat, nougat. Not a nougat guy. I can't believe you guys didn't know what halloumi was. Have you tried it yet, Andy? No, that's the giant cheese, right? That's the one that like doesn't melt, right? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. it's a steak of cheese. It's the best thing ever. (laughs) So, so how do you eat it? However you want, with your hands, with a knife and do, fork. Do you melt it? You you cook it on the grill, and it kind of like semi melts, but it maintains its integrity. And it's kind of squishy when you eat it. Put it on a cracker. No. <laughs> do you actually eat it like a steak, like knife and fork, and you just go to town? It depends. You can kind of like like I had some halloumi on the weekend, and we like grilled it, and then we put a bit of like sprinkled a bit of lemon on it, and we cut it into strips, and you just kind of eat it. With your hands, like a little snack. It's like chicken fingers, but 
cheese. So you, you love, dip it in barbecue uh, sauce? What? Cheese fingers. Yeah. I love so rare so with the, the health warning can only be consumed fried. <laughs> they tell me how to live my life. I'm eating it raw. Apparently, halloumi on a chicken burger is good. Halloumi fries with chili sauce. Oh, yeah. On toast. That's, that's the stuff. So <laughs> I don't know if this is a conspiracy, but we talk a lot about food on here. And there's that guy in chat sometimes called looking for food. What what do you think he would do if if like reward boxes or just like prizes on so rare change to food? Like he's looking yeah, for food. His name, I guess. Found food. <laughs> Found. Yeah. He's not really Nailed looking it. anymore. Mm. Well, he, I mean, he's still looking for food every game week. He's looking for more food. He's not going to be content. He gets food yeah. once. That doesn't mean he's content. Have, Have food, food now. now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're all looking for food, really, if we think about it. Yeah. It's true. Um, conspiracy is that Nico's in the chat and is actually thinking about adding Toblerone to boxes. I mean, it basically comes That's in true. a box. Like, doesn't it come in like a cardboard? It does, yeah. Container. And maybe you can apply your level ups to the Toblerone. So you can get like a normal one, and then you can get the kind of like mega, and then you, you know, you get the super giant one. Yeah. It was like Roxy yeah. territory, VIP Toblerones. Yeah. Yeah. Do you Roxy's think it's they... a thousand Toblerones that he's not even just on his doorstep unopened? <laughs> you can't go outside because the door's <laughs> blocked from all the Toblerones. Do you think if they went to food for rewards, there'd be like a and proportionate number of like managers that were just like, I don't know, <laughs> food grinders or something like that, where it's like almost like just going for the threshold, but they're only on here for the food. Huh. <laughs> yep. Feed feed your family with Sarah. I mean, it's good. It's a good tagline for the recession. Yep. Let's bin There'd off. There'd be like eat. a rice, a rice division. Right. Yeah, just have groceries, steak. <laughs> I mean, we all know which division is the rice division. Come on, <laughs> slippery slope. Here we go. <laughs> Simon, you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Scosmo said, "Is the sewer augmented reality still a thing, or did I dream that?" Hmm. Let me check. No, we're Android boys. We can't even check. Oh, that's yeah, right. It's, it's good that they're spending all that seed money on <laughs> <laughs> on the right things, like augmented right reality. Mm. How about a McDonald's sponsor competition where you can win meal deals? Dude, I know Skazmo's in. I'm in too. Sounds great. We've always said the lunch wheel is the answer to Soraya's problems, and I think everything we're saying is is pointing towards the fact that people's real motivation is food. And I think we might have solved Sarah. Might have fixed it. It's weird that on a conspiracy themed video, we just saved so rare. I was just about to say that. Like we just had to talk through and then we just, you just come right to the solution. Lord, what lineup would you play this game week in a pineapple division where you can win a pineapple? <laughs> like give me the five cards you would play didn't have that in the bingo card <laughs> <laughs> like in season uh what scarcity what do you got um like any good so rare manager i would have to review the total prize menu to see what else was on offer well it's just yeah. pineapples <laughs> Oh, just pineapple. All right. Big well, pineapple. Say, if there's like a filet mignon Big. division, maybe I want to play that. Oh, there like would be. Mignon. But I mean, like, I'm just saying I figured pineapple would be your favorite. But like in the pineapple division, you get big pineapple for first, small pineapple for last oh. or for last prize. Like get some pineapple seeds. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy, yeah. Enjoy that in 20 years, it. however long it takes to grow. Yeah. <laughs> just sprinkle some of the spiky leaves somewhere. Um I I don't know how to answer that question. So you're not prioritizing the pineapple division. Okay. I I feel I am a successful enough so rare manager that I can win enough ETH to just buy a pineapple. It not hasn't anymore. happened yet, but one not day anymore. I it will happen. 
What about a once in a lifetime pineapple experience? Ooh. Eat pineapple so, in a Danzidan. At Anfield. Well, I was thinking no, nah, I was thinking more of like go to where the pineapples are grown and you get to pick your own. Just go to Idaho or <laughs> no, pineapples in Idaho? No, that can't be right. Andy, I have done I that. Think so. I've done that. Costa Rica is the answer. Okay. That's where pineapples are best. There you go. First place is a all inclusive trip to Costa Rica. To and you get to go watch farm. a CONCACAF Champions Cup game while you're there. I was gonna say the the prize is like an a ticket to like the Costa Rica um pineapple farm, but I have to pay my my way there and the hotel there. There's no way they're doing all expense. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It's like here's your here's pineapple. your pineapple picking experience. It's in Costa Rica. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The first place trip to Costa Rica, but you have to cover the accommodations. Yeah. Uh, Nacho actually did say that PK is his brother. That's conspiracy solved. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. All expenses paid by you. <laughs> yeah. Did they pay for you to go to Liverpool? No. No. <laughs> no. No, that was a very expensive trip. I was going to say, Andy okay. sold 12 unique cards to do that. <laughs> yeah, and I went by myself, too. Like, I, I didn't bring a, a loved one. I was Jimmer's loved one, you know, oh, on, wow. the, on the trip. So, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was fun while we were at Anfield, but, like, back in the hotel room, not as fun. You weren't leveling each other up? Yes. <laughs> Yes, we're not related. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. How about this? You get to fly with the Milan squad to Costa Rica to pick your pineapple. Yeah. Just to make it more awkward. Yeah. They're all like, so, why are we here? Like, <laughs> yeah. If you if you want a meal with Giroux, what would you what would you be eating? Like what would what would the meal be? Something Sloppy very steak. Oh, yeah? yeah. You think that he's a piece right of shit, huh? Get <laughs> a real about this Slick back hair. Get the most. <laughs> yeah. We actually um, have an interview with Olivier Giroud in the coming episodes. Um, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, so it's funny that you brought that up. <laughs> It may also just be my mate from the north of England who looks like Olivier Giroud, but we're going to get him on the pod. Hmm. <laughs> so he, he's 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 from the England. the north of London, or what, what did you call it? <laughs> it's from Leeds. <laughs> from Leeds, I can't There's imagine a from Leeds uh, who's in Australia who looks like a Frenchman yep. who currently lives in Italy. There's yeah. There's no way someone from Leeds looks like Giroux. You'd be surprised. Tune in next week for our exclusive Olivier Giroux interview. He doesn't there sound anything like you'd think he would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop us there. I don't think we can top previewing an Olivier Giroux interview. Who knew Olivier yeah. Giroud was from Leeds? Yeah, no one. That's mm. that's the exclusive part, right? Yeah, we got, got the inside scoop that no one else has. Wow. Hmm. Born in Leeds. Born in Leeds. <laughs> Learning something every day. There's the conspiracy. Um, thanks everyone for coming. Please like, subscribe. Andy has finished cooking. <laughs> Man, um, Ooh, it's like a nice yeah. fan like, too. Subscribe all that good stuff. Uh, Rumor Giroud got into a big night last night, last week after the France game. There you go. We'll see. We'll see. You guys can ask him all about it um, on your show next week. Um, Ali Simon, thank you very much for coming on. I think, like we said, went through all the conspiracies and then solved so rare. So, I, I mean, you're welcome to everybody here. We'll all be rich now. <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody. And, uh, oh, I guess I should say this. Go subscribe to So Rare Down Under on YouTube. So you can get this Olivier Giroux interview. You know what I just noticed? That this almost says Olivier on it. <laughs> what if we gave him one live on stream? There you go. It'd be great if you Olivier. gave him one that said Oliver. 
Yeah. And be like, no, no, it's, you know. I'm Oliver from Leeds. Yeah. We just Americanized it. It's Oliver from Leeds. <laughs> anyway, thank you to everybody. We'll see you around.